On today's episode, we're going to break down the matchups and we're going to tell you exactly who we will be starting, who we will try not to start, including some starts of the week that you do not want to miss. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave us some comments about how your teams are doing and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Oh, yeah. We, We went extra growly today. Yes, we did. Is that because of the matchup? Yeah. It's a growly matchup. Uh Uh-huh. It's a hot one tonight. Thursday, October 5th. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. I think it'll be a great one, actually. Great episode or great game? Both. Amazing. Uh, This is is the kind of Thursday night matchup that on paper looks a little worse than I think we'll get. Um, I think both teams, both teams are ready for a shootout. I, that's what I'm hoping for tonight. Maybe saying it out loud will make it happen. I don't know. But uh, Sam Howell, Justin Fields. I mean, we had a ton of good performances. We, we previewed this game yesterday. Had a ton of good performances from Chicago fantasy options last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam Howell looked good against Philly. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the the previous week. What a putrid matchup it seemed to be the Broncos versus the Bears. But in reality, th- those can be a lot of fun when you've got uh, two bad defenses. The problem I have with this game is the commander's defense is too good. I mean, they're not great, but they're too good for Justin Fields. Oh, don't don't make the mistake of me thinking the Bears could win a is, ball game. That's is not that because they're not like the dead worst. Right. I was, I was really hoping for Justin Fields they'd play the at least the second worst. Uh, so we got that going on Come tonight, on, Justin. I'm excited. Well, uh, we got starts of the week on today's show, getting into the matchups quick mention here at the top. We always talk about the foot clan, greatest people on the planet. And uh, I wanted to invite those of you out there that are not a part of the official foot clan supporters of this show, head over to join the foot.com. You'll get, uh, the privilege of the honor of supporting this podcast and Jason's eventual haircut mm. uh we can talk about that in a minute <laughs> but uh you also get some perks bonus weekly podcast premium in-season tools including the stream finder uh the target market share reports the snapshot tool uh the expanded start sit tool you get to uh play in the mega bowl every year as a supporter you get a free copy of our book digital copy of the book um you get access to our discord server which is uh the kids say popping do they do they even say that anymore they i say, don't think so they, they say, say it's that. dripping Dripping, yeah, with with conversations. <laughs> uh, we get game day alerts, Foot Clan leagues, a lot more. Oh, is it lit? Is that it? Oh, oh no, that's it's not lit anymore. No. That's that's busted. Yeah, <laughs> that's dog water, as my oh, kids would say. Is that what? Yeah, okay. Um, join the foot dot com if that was an enticing pitch for you. Uh, Jason, you did not receive a haircut, no, and you're no, in I the didn't. same state you were in yesterday. Yeah, because I am a man of principle. And I'm not going to put a hat on my head <laughs> to go to a barber. In fact, I went there yesterday and I had to <laughs> leave. just didn't get the haircut. I didn't get the haircut because I, it turned out I had a scheduling conflict, rescheduled it for today. But as I walked out, I went back in. I said, oh, oh, oh hey, uh, help help settle yeah. a debate. Um, so we On the podcast, we were talking and some people think like, oh, you, it's perfectly fine to wear a hat. You're going to get a haircut. Some people think, oh, you shouldn't wear a hat. You know, do you have an opinion? So I asked my hairstylist and she says... Oh, thank you. It is a nightmare when people wear hats because the cowlicks make it very difficult to give a good fade or anything like that. So it is definitively yeah. answered. Stand corrected. Oh, good for you, Mike. No, I, New information. I, I stand corrected. So there you go, America. That your hairstylist is terrible and doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> I was absolutely, I thought for the first time in... 15 years Mike was just humbly <laughs> bowing down to the truth. I I, I mean, was shocked. I was proud. I, I thought was... we were getting just and then he gave yeah, it all up. I was happy. He just insulted your hairstyle. <laughs> I was happy for America to learn and have an example of growth 
and instead vitriol. He's wearing two hats <laughs> next time. Yeah. You know how many hats I can wear? At least five. I'm going to put a vacuum sealed hat on there. Now, suck that air right in. But you didn't even get to have a haircut. No, so now I got to look like this again. Sorry. I mean, it can't take that long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, right. it's been a while. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jason, you, you said you were not worried unless you heard that he was dealing with a different injury. And guess what? Hmm. It's a different injury. I'm worried. It is a uh, an abdominal injury. Hey, man. And oh, non-participant no. on Wednesday. This seems highly so, questionable. It's, uh, it, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a little <laughs> sus for sure. Um, I, I'm not... I'm not um, going to freak out at all until we have Thursday's practice reports. Very common for people to miss a Wednesday practice. The fact that it's a new listed injury means you just have to pay attention to it. You can't ignore it. If it was just the toe, I would completely ignore it. Now it's like, okay, we've got a new injury. I will say this. Amon Ra, it, there, are, there are players who are just tougher. It's just truth. There's human beings that play through injuries and are tougher, and, and there are weaklings. Watsons. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Watsons, as we call them. I love it. <laughs> no, it's fine because it's Deshaun Watson. You're allowed to body bag Deshaun Watson over and over. Um, but, uh, you know, like. You were like, medically cleared. <laughs> get yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people would have had surgery for this. Like, hold on. Hold, is my money still fully guaranteed? Well, technically, yes. Mm, that's good. Because I'm going to take the weekend off. <laughs> you're, you're right. Amon Ra is much tougher. I, I, It's a little worrisome because. Dan Campbell came out and said uh, he he equivocated on his availability for the week. It's interesting also the added layer of we've had long discussions, waiver wire show, Jamison Williams. Like, Jamison Williams is back and Amon Ra might be out this week. So that's just a, a wrinkle sure. of um, potential relevance for Williams uh, in week one. I mean, where do you turn? I mean, Sam Laporta, but he's in your lineup. So it's like all of a sudden, if Amon Ra missed, Josh Reynolds would be become very interesting. For I, sure, I will. I will say it. I think that if Amon Ra does miss, that's the you have to unleash Jameer Gibbs. And if you if if y'all didn't see it, uh, Austin Eckler does a show with Matt Harmon where they they talk fantasy football, and Eckler gave his pro perspective of why is Jameer Gibbs not getting on the field, and it's it was a very intriguing insight from. From a look, I trust Austin Eckler knows what he's talking about because he's an elite running back. So he kind of laid out some things that Gibbs was doing right, what Gibbs was doing wrong. But those short area targets, I mean, like we've I, seen him I get nine see, targets in a game this year. So I feel like you have to let Gibbs work in that. He would be my replacement for Amon Ra. It makes sense, and the TLDR is what everybody really honestly, if they admit to themselves, already knows about the situation in the backfield, that David Montgomery is a better running back right now. Yes. That's the truth. We all watch it. He's getting more out of his touches. I mean, he's uh, more decisive. He's a better running back right now. Yes. Gibbs has the higher ceiling and potential and explosiveness and electricity and all the intangible words that don't equate to reading the blocks or, or or fighting through arm tackles right now. So, uh, Mike, I, I'm glad you said it because I, I wouldn't I be knew. caught dead saying it myself. <laughs> That's why but Gibbs should up. have a chance. All right, Cooper Cup officially listed as a limited participant. Uh, however, Sean McVay came out and said he's not limited. Sean McVay said he's he, unlimited. He he just said oh no don't he just do had that. a That's he rust. just had a normal practice and he said he's he's not limited. He said he Ron Burgundy the the practice report and just said it, but it's not true. Right. So Cooper Cup's fine. I, I, the the odds of him being out there this week seem very high. Whether he gets a full allotment of snaps, whether he's I mean we found out this morning Debo was out there as a full decoy last week with mm -hmm. no no targets. That was super disappointing to hear. And they didn't need Debo, which is what helped him stay a decoy. I, I do think that because of the matchup here for um you know, for Cooper Cup, he's not gonna be a decoy against the Eagles. They they're gonna I think they're, they're gonna, gonna need him. Get, yeah, if he's out on the field, he's in my starting lineup. Kyron Williams missed practice in full, but McVay said it was precautionary and believes he will play this weekend. If he plays, is Kyron right back into your lineup? Absolutely. T. Higgins didn't practice. 
listed as day to day. Mike and I were talking in the studio yesterday. I said I can't imagine he doesn't miss at least one week. Mike said maybe more. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, the the idea that he's day to day is just hog swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's what? Uh, oh man, dude, he's not playing dude, this week. Jason without a hat is yeah. fire. Seriously, Jason what without a hat is it's like the inhibitions are kept underneath mm-hmm. the cap, and he released them. My brain's going everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't cut that hair, man. You are Samson right now. <laughs> cancel, cancel this appointment. Oh boy, uh, Javante Williams didn't practice. You know the Fab world went crazy for McLaughlin and Javante. Seems like he could miss. Debo will be playing at less than 100%. You talk about needing him. They're going to need him against the Cowboys. I am trying not to play him after what happened last week. I, yeah. It just – like, I'm going to play Damian Pierce over him. Damian Pierce against Atlanta. Uh, I am mad that they didn't bench him last week because if they had, I wouldn't have had .9 points on my team. The, so The teams with Christian McCaffrey approve. <laughs> Debo has a decoy goodness yeah it is sensational awesome. keep him keep him so injured and out there just him screaming hey throw me the ball Did and then you, christian mccaffrey you houses got, it you got four touchdowns last week was that enough for you it was hey jason can vouch i, I can vouch for jason this. can vouch for this after the fourth touchdown <laughs> and maybe after i saw yeah, christian yeah, mccaffrey yeah. Caffrey on the side getting two Two physical trainers working on him, massaging his neck, massaging his arm. I was like, sit him down. Oh, you were done. Sh- shut it you down. You had had enough. But then they got to the goal line, and then I was screaming, okay, give the man his faith. Oh, my God. And they tried. They tried. They No, they didn't. They didn't give him the ball. Oh, they did. No. Yeah, he had a, he had a carry. Uh, he was got he, on the goal line. They had a carry on about the 10. Yes, he got them to the goal line, but then they went juice and then yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, Purdy. And I yeah. lost because Purdy got the sneak. <laughs> Uh, Austin Eckler. You should have been rooting harder I was. for Christian McCaffrey. Oh, I was. Uh, Austin Eckler expects to be back for week six. It's good news. He should be pretty much at full strength there based on the expected timeline. It seemed like he might have suited up, and now he gets the extra week off with the bye week. So, I, I, I mean, not that you would have benched him, but I wouldn't be concerned. Like, if you're playing DFS lineups, I think he should be at 100% performance. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's jump in. Fantasy forecast. Well, 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 London, we meet again. You guys excited to set the alarms this weekend, Mike? It's happening again? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. We've got uh, Jacksonville 2-2 two and two taking on the 3-1 and one Buffalo Bills. Bills listed as the home team in London. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Bills minus 5.5. The over-under is 48. That's nice. Uh, it's been a uh, rough start to the season for predictability on the Jacksonville side. And that pretty much goes for everybody. I mean, Lawrence and Ridley and Kirk and the injury to Zay Jones. And then, honestly, hate to say it, hate to admit it, most consistent player right now on that roster <laughs> is starting Evan Ingram every week. Mm-hmm. That's right, baby. So things aren't working. Well, for Jacksonville. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I mean, even Travis Etienne, who has looked, uh, you know, he's looked the same he looked last year. He's he's like he's shot out of a cannon every time he touches the football. He's been good. I mean, he's the RB18 on the year, but from a consistency perspective, he's only got one touchdown, which came in week one. Uh, 55 yards rushing last week. I'm not going to hit that. Yeah, it was too, too, I will. All right. <laughs> So this is a really tough matchup. The Buff- Atlas Jason's at it again. Yeah, he's, he's living f- wild and free, using words like hog swallow. I'm not wearing pants. No, oh, I, I believe it. <laughs> what? I believe it. Um, B- Buffalo's defense has been really difficult to score points against. And uh, I know they lost Tredavious White, but that has happened before, and they've been a very, very good defense. So it, it doesn't give me a lot of I- enthusiasm with regards to ceiling performances for Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, the, the the hope here is that because you're playing against a Bills team that projects to score a lot of points, that the passing game will uh, come to fruition here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's, you know, that's just a common um, view whenever you've got a wide receiver against a high-scoring offense, but it often doesn't happen. You know, we, we view that way with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's like, oh, good, you're playing against Patrick Mahomes. You're going to have to pass all day. 
Uh, same now with the Bills, but these defenses are really good this year. And I mean, look at look at Miami. Yeah, exactly. Tyreek Hill had his first bad game of the season. So, Tua had an under twenty point game. I mean, it's they were yeah. the best offense in football. They just scored seventy. Yeah, this isn't a great matchup. This is a top ten defense against wide receivers. So I think you have to manage your expectations and the fact that you are really in a roulette. Now, the last couple weeks, it's gone towards Christian Kirk, but it could easily swing back to Calvin Ridley like it was week one. Uh, you know, this is a, a situation where I think you need to be looking at options. Hopefully you have a lot of depth. I, I don't think they are must starts, like force them in. I think there are situations where, um, you know, if you're like, would you start Calvin Ridley or, you know, Michael Pittman? If that's, if you've got that luxury, sure. I would be looking the other way. For perspective, I know that uh, week one is very impactful on the emotions of fantasy players. Calvin Ridley since week one is on pace for 39 receptions. Too small a sample. Yeah. Three games. Two, three, two. I, I'm just saying it's been yeah. – I'm giving you the other side of that first week where, look, uh, it hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. So uh, – T-Law has been disappointing. I mean, I, I I would be trying hard not to play him this week. Uh, Ingram and Etienne are going to be in your lineup, and I'm I'm with you. Yeah, he's been disappointing, and we had the hopes of a shootout against Kansas City in Week Two, mm -hmm. and they scored nine points. They are kind of dysfunctional right now. On the other side, play him. Yeah, who are you? Who Allen would Cook, you not play? Diggs, Davis has scored in three straight. I believe that is true. I will verify it. Now, is that too small of a sample, or are you riding that? Uh, uh, too on, small of a sample to say, fire. well, he's going to uh, have 17 touchdowns on the season. Yes, he has scored in three st three straight games. He is on fire. So, rules say you have to play him. This matchup is not a bad one. Jacksonville's middle of the pack against wide receivers. So, I just stay in the flames with Gabe Davis. Yeah, I think you play him. It's it's crazy. His, his target totals are not <laughs> – they're low, but he's scoring. Um Dalton Kincaid, Dalton no or Dawson Knox. Dal Both of them seem like risky business they, at this point. They do, but the the Jacksonville matchup is it's okay. They're currently twenty seventh against fantasy tight ends, and Dalton Kincaid did run more routes than Dawson Knox. I think for the first time of the year, where they had basically been uh, dead even ab about, but uh, maybe it was the matchup, or maybe it is. The first round tight end is is starting to separate. The Houston Texans at two and two take on the Atlanta Falcons, who are two and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Falcons minus two. Mike, you're shaking your head. Yeah. Mm -mm. I the line's too small for me to hit the button. Okay. I I have a standards, and they're very high. <laughs> three points. Yeah, three or more. <laughs> um, the over under is forty one. No, I mean I that's an easy one to me. It's too easy. Houston's going to win the game. I mean, Atlanta's okay. offense. All right, Atlanta's offense is uh, abysmal. However, um, could be a pretty fun one because the, the the weakness on the Houston defense is going to be the running game, and Bijan is going to dominate in this yes, one. So, yes, please. Uh, whether they can try to focus on the run and stopping the run and forcing Desmond Ritter to do the thing he hates to do the most, which is throw the football. Apparently, I don't think he hates it. He just hates being accurate. Well, he's not good at it. Right. That's the fact. You can like things you're not good at. That's true. I it, like golf. I'm terrible. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't get paid millions of dollars to play golf. <laughs> uh, Bijan, play him. That's all I want to play in Atlanta. I, I Yeah, I, I actually... But you could take the shot on Algier. That's what I was going to If the game up. script flipped the right direction. But the opportunities have gone down four straight weeks. Yes. The, I would be trying yeah, I, I don't else. think anyone is like really wanting to play Tyler Algier. Like, oh, yes, finally. Um, his opportunities, week one, 18, week two, 16. Still pretty good. But then we saw it really shift over to Bijan. Ten opportunities two weeks ago and nine opportunities. Tyler Algier with nine opportunities is never going to be good for fantasy football. You need to be 15-plus opportunities. But the difference in those games – is that the last two weeks against De uh, the Detroit Lions and the Jacksonville Jaguars, they were pretty much blown out. They lost 6-20 to and 7-23. to This was a situation where they had to pass more, and they couldn't just run all day on their opponent. Now, you say you believe the Houston Texans are going to win this game, that the Atlanta offense has been too bad, but what the Atlanta offense prefers to do, wants to do, and does well is run the ball, and that's still what the Houston Texans suck at. So the Atlanta offense might 
Like they they suck at stopping no. the run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so the Atlanta offense might be okay here today. And if they are, I think you're going to have you know double the amount of total carries that you saw the the last couple of weeks. And Tyler Algier will be involved. So when you're in a pinch. He might be on waivers. I think he is someone you could plug in as that like emergency flex, or really you wouldn't flex him as you know, an emergency running back when you need a running back. Would you Al play Tyler Algier or Kenny Gainwell against the Rams? Algier. Algier. Uh, I'm going to retract my previous statement. Which of one? the Texans. I don't game? think Texans win. I think Atlanta wins. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to flip it. So not not an almost upset, and I'm going to. I think Atlanta t can do this at home. Uh, against Houston, Houston having to travel, they still they're still a very young team. Yeah, and uh, Damian Pierce was limited with a knee injury at Wednesday's practice. We don't have any alarm about that yet, but something to monitor. Maybe a reason to put Devin Singletary kind of like tucked away on a bench because mm -hmm. uh, if he were to miss or something were to happen, then you would have somebody to start. Nico Collins is the wide receiver seven on the season last week with nine targets. Seven catches, 168, two touchdowns. Falcons have been uh, respectable against the run and the pass this year. So I think, you know, you know, do you – what are your feelings on Tank Dell right now? Because he went from uh, the new hotness and everybody's favorite waiver wire pickup to a – basically a nothing performance that now throws a little bit of shade into whether you can start him every week. I'm still starting him. I don't. I don't know that I'm still necessarily like forcing the start with Tank Dell. Um, I certainly want him rostered. Looking him or for a Jahan good matchup. Dotson tonight. Oh, uh, I think that's a really fair question. That is a fair question. I would go Jahan Dotson. Um, I want to lean see that a, way. I want to see a little bit more from Tank Dell. Obviously, we we've seen him have big weeks. We've seen him have s small weeks. Th this matchup, it it isn't. You know, when you play, it's not it's, good. Yeah, it's it's kind of the opposite of what we were talking about with Buffalo, where you're like. This this is a an Atlanta Falcons team you just don't view as as a great team right now, but they're they're very stout uh, defensively. They haven't given up very big performances, and a lot of that comes primarily in the games where they can control the clock. And that this might be one of those. Tank Dell or Jordan Addison, who's had two bad weeks in a row. Jordan Addison, bounce back candidate for me this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tank That's uh, Kansas City. Is that right? The, oh, wait, yes, yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, Tank Dell or. Uh, where did the name? You guys shoot. are both Nico over Tank, right? Yes, right uh, now Nico. Yeah, I, Nico, I so, after yeah. this last game, you've got three of his four games where he has nine or more targets. That's just that's really good. It, Nico to me is someone hard to bench right now. Tank or Tyler Boyd against Arizona, presuming I, yeah, I play Higgins Boyd. I play Boyd. Cardinals out. defense is not good enough to. Yeah, if if Higgins is out. I would I would go boy. All right, uh, quick quick man. break. Uh, are you changing? I'm changing. I'm going Dell. I I got to see Burrow look like Burrow again before I can rely on an old Cardinals should Tyler help boy. him do that. Yeah, they should. All right. We'll be back. But shouldn't the Titans have? I yes. I don't know. I don't know. Titans have these performances on defense every He year. Uh, also he Burrow did say this that he came out of the game feeling all right and that like like injury wise. Shouldn't have said that, Burrow. <laughs> shouldn't have said that just saying like because he did he had the setback two weeks ago so maybe he'll be healthier now all right quick break back with the panthers lions <laughs> carolina is 0 four taking on the three and one detroit lions the DraftKings sportsbook line has the detroit lions as 10 point home favorites Woo! the over under is 44 and a half when is the last time they've been a double-digit favorite? Good for you, Detroit. Good for you. Is this game going to play out the way everyone expects? With Detroit hammering the Panthers? Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. You positive? Yeah, I I'm am. pretty darn confident. All right. Uh, we talked about Amon Ra's situation earlier, so uh, no updates Thus far, we've had the team checking on that. Jamison Williams will make his debut likely on 20 to 25% of snaps. Josh Reynolds was limited with a groin injury. He will be a beneficiary if Amon Ra misses. Um, and, you know, you, you have a Panthers defense that on the course of the year have not given up a lot of quarterback fantasy points or wide receiver fantasy points. It's all come on the ground, which, look, David Montgomery is a, a must-start player. Jameer Gibbs... I think you can keep putting him in your flex. 
I agree. I agree. I don't think you need to go away from Jameer Gibbs. He's still getting opportunities. He hasn't when, – when you have a, an explosive athlete like this, sometimes you have to wait for the big, long chunk play, and um, it, it hasn't really happened. As no, long... you haven't had the A-chan moment. Exactly. But he has the A-chan skill. We saw it over and over yes, and over. Does. There's a reason he was drafted 12th. And Maybe this week? Maybe. Maybe this, maybe this week, yeah. I mean, uh, right now it looks like Carolina is – you know they're they're 29th against running backs right now, so that's where you want to focus your your offense on the other Monty. side. Monty, Monty's just yes. gonna eat. He is. I tried to, to trade to. for him in a couple of leagues this week. Our league of record. Good luck. No, no. You, did you try as well? No, I just I. It's that's Vance's team, and yeah, he's. I did try there. <laughs> You're gonna have to. It, trade. it was denied. Yeah. <laughs> on the other side, uh, not an encouraging matchup. No, it's. No. I, the big worry here is that Bryce Young is just going to have zero time to do anything. I mean, the pass rush for Detroit, it's ferocious. Uh, he has Bryce Young has looked poor. I think that's generous. I mean, this is a player that is, um, you know, yards per attempt is super low. He's thrown two touchdowns in three games. You know, Miles Sanders has been limited. These are not encouraging starts on the Carolina side for anybody. Even Adam Thielen, who is the wide receiver 10, who I think you have to kind of keep in there because he's going to get the volume of uh, potential garbage time. And, you know, garbage time has been friendly to him. His target totals over the last three weeks is on 175 target pace. Yeah, it's 26%. But I don't think it's going to be a ceiling game for him. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine benching Adam Thielen right now. Like, I'll take the L on my preseason stance of Adam Thielen – having lost it and not really mattering in this offense. You know, the last three weeks he's been a top 24 wide receiver. I, I, I might agree with you that – does he get a touchdown? Probably not because you figure there's, what, one or two to go around this game uh, with the Carolina offense. But when you've got nine targets, 14 targets, eight targets, three weeks in a row, and you're the first read in the offense, there was a quote after the game talking about uh, why – they had to call a timeout, why Frank Reich had to call a timeout during that game, and it was talking about how he called a play for Adam Thielen. It, and only Adam Thielen could run that play. Like, it was a play just for him, and then he didn't realize Adam Thielen wasn't out there, had to call the timeout. Like, they are designing plays for Thielen. Mingo should be back. Not that it really matters. And uh, if you don't, you shouldn't need me to say it, but Sam Laporta is a must-start at the tight yeah. end position. For How are we looking at Miles Sanders, who they he split time with Chuba? He it was the groin injury, I believe. It, it was. Show yes. us the, how you're looking at him, Jason. <laughs> Give me the face. You when you look at him, what do you? What does your face do? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Please Our, no! No, th this is a bad matchup for running backs. He's dealing with a groin injury. Um, splitting time with Chuba. I'm not starting Chuba. I'm not starting Miles Sanders. Yeah, the, the Lions. You don't really start running backs against the Lions. They're number one. Gus Edwards against Pittsburgh or huh. Miles. The the Baltimore starting a Baltimore running back right now is like I believe Gus was it's really the, last the primary thing, guy. It's the last thing I want to do. Gus, so you would rather start I think you're Miles going Sanders? I think you're gonna see four players touch the football in Baltimore. Gus had eighteen opportunities last week, fifteen carries, three targets. I mean he's he is the one of the several. Well, um, you're getting Keaton Mitchell back, and you have uh, Justice Hill more healthy, and Melvin Gordon touches the football. I guess I'd go Gus because of the 18 opportunities, but I'm not going to go Gus with, like, Gusto. a smile. Well, oh, Mike. Yeah, it was oh, right there. Uh, I like it. Would you go the the hot waiver pick, Jaleel McLaughlin, or Miles Sanders? Assuming that Javante is out, I, I want the hotness of okay. McLaughlin. Titans are two and two. Colts are two and two. DraftKings Sportsbook line Titans minus one and a half. The over under is forty three. Uh, Anthony Richardson, he's been very good for fantasy. Yes, he has. Maybe kind of below the radar with his missed game, but I mean, number two fantasy quarterback last week, number four in week one, and what is well on his way in week two out before the injury. Yeah, he's been amazing. Uh, it's funny because he, he completed 44% of passes last week to, on his way to a QB2 finish. <laughs> and you watch the highlights, like you see, like sometimes you, ha you have rookies that you just never see it. 
you see it five times a game with Anthony Richardson. It's and, and a lot both sides. Of, and I'm I mean with yeah both sides, <laughs> but you see it with the arm. I'm not even talking about the rushing ability. I'm talking about crazy, you know, off balance side arm cross body on the run throws that are like almost no one can make them. And so, you know, he's going to have some monstrous games this year. You know, they are they're at home. Like Anthony Richardson this week is he. He's like where where does he start? Yeah. It, well, can, let me put that to the test because I have I have him in a bunch of leagues. It, are you playing him over over Tua? That is probably the most difficult one. I've got them back to back in my rankings, and I mean, I'm Tua I'm has going been, to adjust. I'm going to put Anthony Richardson Tua's above. Very hot, Tua. very cold. Yeah. Tua is playing the Giants. Tua has uh, gone number one overall, number twenty six, number two overall, number eighteen. I'm going to put Anthony Richardson in my lineup above Tua. See, I now I think you're just trying to trick me into playing that. <laughs> no. Last I, week, you cost me the yes week. Yes, I did, baby. I, okay, so I did but, not cost you the week. I would have won you the week if you had uh, listened to me Sunday morning. I, they're, they're both such good options this week. I think that Richardson is the, the safer floor. But like Tua, Tua can be number one again. Tua can be a top three quarterback this week, where Richardson will Richardson will definitely finish in the top ten, and Tua has a chance that A Chan takes things away from him. Yep. So uh, where are or, you at, Mike? Not in my division, guy. I would probably <clears throat> play. I'd play Tua. Okay. Wow. But it I thought after it, you just it, it, will just, it, it depends on the matchup. But but dude, I no risk and no biscuit, man. I want those points. I feel like they have just about the same ceiling. I feel like either one of these guys could go out and put up 35 fantasy points, but the floor, and maybe maybe we we haven't seen it with Jonathan Taylor. Maybe Jonathan Taylor, a chance, you know, Anthony Richardson. Um, but that that is the worry with how good the Dolphins' running game is. If the touchdowns go in on the ground, you know, when the touchdowns go in on the ground for the Colts, it's Anthony Richardson on the ground, right? Or Jonathan Taylor. Maybe that was that's what I'm saying. Maybe maybe this is a a new. Uh, Colts we have to see with Jonathan Taylor we'll, active. We'll which, see if he plays. So, I, I will say this. It, it very much seems like he's going to play. All the quotes of what he's talking about, he, he he talks about, I'm here to support my teammates. I'm here to help the city. Uh, I'm 100% healthy. He that said. part is the weirdest part to me. Which part? That's the part that stood out as like, is that a message for your team or is that a message for someone else? That's a message to the ownership. He was asked if he wants to be a Colt. And he said, it doesn't "No, the matter. I'm 100 percent healthy part." Oh, I gotcha. feel like that coming out and publicly pronouncing that is interesting. That's all. Yeah, I mean, if he is 100 percent healthy, I don't, I don't see. And and with the the quotes from uh, Shane Steichen talking about how he looks good, he looks like he's in great shape. Can't imagine when he's active. They're like, "Yeah, but we're. I mean, we're not going to play him this week." I I don't know why you wouldn't. So I, I'm of the mindset now that Jonathan Taylor plays this week, and I I'd start him. I mean, it's not a great matchup against Tennessee, but you had a, Jonathan Taylor. You had a really good first week for Michael Pittman, and it's been three, three mediocre fantasy finishes. But you know, he's been good except for this past week. In reality, yeah, only four, only one catch this past week for 15 yards, no touchdown. It was a hugely disappointing week. He got a two point conversion though. Yeah, I did. Thank goodness. <laughs> that was half his points. So, so, you know, on paper, this looks like a great matchup. The Titans' defense gives it up to the wide receiver. Yeah, we'll talk about him a little bit later, but I, I would certainly be starting Michael Pittman in this matchup. If Josh uh, – if Josh – if Jonathan Taylor is out of Zach Moss a start, it's a really brutal oh, Titans man. defense that never gives up yards. I no. think if Taylor's in, you can't play Moss. No, well, obviously, if Taylor's in, you can't play Moss. If Taylor's, if Taylor's out, out oh. can you play Zach Moss in this – matchup against Tennessee yes, it would be a hesitant dirt, start it would just dirty volume though I'm hoping that the passing game gets me down to the goal line and Richardson is benevolent and gives Zach Moss <laughs> a touchdown DeAndre Hopkins is averaging four and a half receptions and 54 yards a game okay Colts defense is giving up 35 fantasy points a game to opposing fantasy wide receivers Titans offense looks like it was remedied a little bit last week against Cincinnati and Cincinnati had looked really good on defense the week before. So, how much confidence do you have in Hopkins in this this game? I've got a fair amount of confidence in Hopkins. Um, Would you say like 
four for fifty. Well, he he straight up dropped a a big touchdown this last week. So if if you look back at this game, I think you would have had a completely different view of Hopkins this week if he just clasps that ball. And um, usually he does. You know, he's not one to. That's, that's, that's a little mean. Uh, a little, I don't think it was a drop. Uh, that's that's I think fair. It was, it was a, a little it was out a of his miss. reach. It was it a was, miss. It yeah. was one where I was surprised he didn't catch up to the ball and get it. Because it older. wasn't, yeah. it wasn't just a straight drop. But my point is, like, if that had been six inches closer or whatever, it was so close to having a really good fantasy day, um, where I think our viewpoint changes just based on like a little bit. And what we've seen from Hopkins on the field, it hasn't been good for fantasy, but it's been good. Like he hasn't looked bad, right? He hasn't. Uh, I think he, he's he looked. Looks, I think he's looked underwhelming. Really? Yeah. I, I, I every time I he doesn't look himself. He doesn't look like old Hopkins at all. I, I, I'm gonna have well, to. He go. looks like old Hopkins. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to go rewatch Hopkins. He looks like he's my. He's doing the. He's installed the program to transition into late career AJ Green Hopkins. Wow, I gotta go watch this because when I've been watching, I've been impressed. I with mean him. that that play, I've been really disappointed with Tannehill. That play is in part one of the plays. I mean, the, the, the old Hopkins gets that football. He he wasn't quick enough to get to it. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been under. So, uh, would you be starting Hopkins or? Yeah, he's a flex play. I mean, you, the real question is Pittman or Hopkins. I would go Pittman. Mike, Pittman. Uh, all right. The Giants are one and three. They take on the three and one Miami Dolphins. We just talked about the two Anthony Richardson situation. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Dolphins minus eleven at home. Uh, that was also one of the reasons why I am I'm I'm on the two over Richardson side. Miami at home. They have not played. They've played one home game in their in their four weeks. So uh, they get to play at home against the Giants. They have an implied point total in this game, guys, of 30 points. Very nice. The over-under is 48 and a half, like I said, but they, they are heavy, heavy favorites. Tua is number one in passing yards. It does seem like at least the odds are in uh, his favor to con continue the ping-ponging between uh, elite performances and uh, disappointing performances because he has Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell healthy, A. Chan and Mostert. Uh, I see. I see. Brooks has the question of is Raheem a scary start? He's not a scary start to me. Not in a game you're heavy heavily favored where you know he had he had a heck of a catch in last week's game, but they were shut down. That catch was outstanding. If you haven't seen, I mean. That was a catch that a lot of wide receivers don't make. Down the field, sandwiched between two guys, high point in the ball, catching it like his arms over another defender, and he's a 31-year-old running back. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, last week, if he doesn't fumble two times, he still puts up eight fantasy points, and this was in a whooping. He had five targets. He had seven the week before, so he's getting the ball thrown his way. I, I'm he's, fine with most of Oh, yeah, he's still in for me. I, I, based on the question being like, is it a scary start, I, I might – go try to trade for for most or if people are worried off a down performance uh, the i will throw out savan ahmed practiced in full on wednesday he played last week did, did he? he yeah i'm pretty sure he was active in that game then i missed that i will <laughs> verify here let's see he, uh, sure did. he played six percent of the snaps but I'm, uh, the point being like he's uh, it, healthier it, it, that's I mean HN is a start. Two is yeah. a start. Mostert's a start. Yeah, Hill's I'm, a start. I'm not, a start. I'm, I'm not saying that. Saying I'm, I'm moving off of HN or Mostert, but it, it wouldn't surprise me to see him back up in the you know 15 percent of snaps. It is really fair, and I think we should make a note to actively check on what his snaps are this next week because we saw this with HN when when he came back from his injury and he was active for a week. He played in 10 percent of the snaps got one carry was completely uninvolved that was his first time back so maybe this last week with uh Ahmed active you know they they just were you know gently easing him back in so we'll pay attention to it this week but it could be a situation where it's like yeah you're just you're just an emergency thing in case one of our yeah, running backs possible. gets injured and uh, that it's, would be it, so it, yeah last week would have been a hard one to read that because if he was still dealing with injury they were the game was over halfway through the third so you weren't going to use up an injured player on the back half of the game. The Giants side, if Saquon doesn't play. Yes, you can play Burita if Saquon doesn't play. Okay. They're, they're 24th against fantasy running backs. You know, they, I know they're, they're heavy, heavy favorites, but 
The Giants' implied total is still 19 points. Breida, I'd be trying not to. Brita had 19 opportunities last week, which is awesome. Yeah, I guess, and, I guess you put him in there. And he only scored 10 fantasy yeah. points. It, this, this is not an exciting type of a thing, but it's tough in the streets. Yeah, all, and all I that being said, I think we, we assume Saquon's playing, right? I believe he is, yeah. he's He was limited on Wednesday. He's listed as questionable right now, so I, I believe he's going I to I don't know, use. man. If, if it really was a high ankle sprain, then he's not going to play in this game. That's what I would imagine. Uh, I know he's been practicing, but it was uh, – I thought we'd go down to the wire last week. We didn't go down to the wire. They ruled him out. He's probably going to be out there, but just be ready if okay. he's not. And, you know, the last two weeks – it's been real bad for Darren Waller. Three for 20, three for 21. Yep. The targets were down at three total targets this past week. I know the pass rush was terrible. Um, I think I'm very is, nervous about it. I think it's a bounce back week. I, I, I think if you bench Darren Waller this week, you're making a mistake. I really do. I think he's going to be a squeaky wheel. This matchup against the Dolphins the last year and a half has been one to target specifically. And I totally understand how bad he was and how hard it would be to put him in your lineup again. You feel like you're it's swallowing. squeaky, squeaky walrus. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah. <laughs> goo, 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 goo. Uh, my concern with him is not really related to, like, if it was a neutral, you know, 100% healthy Darren Waller uh, coming into the year and he's just not had a couple down games, that'd be one thing. I don't think he looks himself. That's fair. So that's a part of the problem. You know, the separation and dealing with the hamstring, I'm a little concerned there, but you look, it's a tight end position. Yep. The matchup is good. You're probably playing it. And you're, I mean, in, in a full desperation, I think you, in a PPR, you can start Wandale, but this is more of, let, let's see if Wandale, if the snaps jump up yet again, if he jumps up into the 80% of, of snaps this week, I think that you can have confidence in, in, in him as a flex type full, of a play. Full PPR is fine. I, I would focus more on like uh DraftKings. I think he's only 3K in DraftKings for a full PPR, three K. I, I think. I uh, don't Ad don't adjusting my lineup. <laughs> yeah, don't quote me on that as a guarantee, but I believe so. Oh, Andy says yes. Andy's got him in his lineup. He's he's nodding. He's aware. All right. Sorry to tell the foot clean of a good play, Andy. <laughs> You're so disappointed. I, I would have found it today. <laughs> but what if you didn't? Yeah. Uh, the what New if I didn't? The New Orleans Saints are two and two. They take on the one and three New England Patriots. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Patriots minus one. The over under is forty. This game is uh, I don't I know it's not an official segment. If anybody wants to, anybody works for a company that wants to sponsor the fart fest of the week, <laughs> that's what this is. I mean I I don't know if I want to cast my eyes in the direction of this ball game. Brought to you by Bino. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean this is the gross. It's is that still around? Beano? Yeah. <laughs> That's just beans, right? No. No, it's it was not? No, it was Beano. Oh, well, this was this was a right family staple. This was like anti gas a, pills. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that yeah. is an anti gas medicine. That's correct. I see. I thought it was. I thought. Well, Andy thought. No, which I would have gone bush baked beans. Yeah. Well, I mean, they should be the sponsor. Of this is gonna be so many I farts here. I don't know if if Bush likes to lean into the fact that beans give you the farts. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Big Beans tries to downplay yeah. that. All right, but if you watch this game, okay, so, so it's just gonna, Gas X. Gas sure. X is leading the charge right now. Listen, these these are two teams that are currently fifteen. This is fifteen points a game is what the Saints are averaging. Thirteen points a game is what the Patriots are averaging. Yeah, they're being really kind. So with they, these lines, their offenses are terrible to begin with, right? But then you have great defenses. How is this line at forty? I don't know. I'm on it. <laughs> Give me a minute, guys. Gotta yeah. go do something real yeah. quick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is. It's gross. And um, you know, R Ramondre was limited with a thigh injury on Wednesday. First time he's been on the practice report. He's been awful. And he's he's not a great play this week. I mean, we've talked about playing guys like Tyler Algier. You're obviously going to start Ramondre over Algier. You you don't go down to that level, but you're not happy about it. And if you can replace him, I I. I would. Um, I've still, I'm still sticking to my guns of after this down week. I want to go trade for Ramondre on the cheap uh, to take advantage of the next month of matchups. I think he's a good player, um, and I hope that this offense can heal some things after a tough stretch of defenses. The Saints are really good against tight ends. Hunter Henry's been in play for most teams most weeks, and it's down I, to 39 now, fellas. Okay. Yeah, the you know Hunter Henry, and if you're desperate, Ramondre, if you have to. 
and then the Patriots, the rest of them, you can go ahead and look the other way. And on the other side, what's frustrating here is that Derek Carr looked – He looked like an, an injured quarterback. He looked terrible last week. That is being very kind. He didn't, he didn't look downfield. I mean, Chris Olave had one catch, and it was a screen play. I watched the game. I wanted Olave to get some receptions. It was a screen play. You know we, what? You, that's what you hope for this week. You hope that the, that the offense says, hey, we need to run more screens for Olave. They need to get him the ball in space, and Derek Carr can't look or throw down the field. So, like, th that needs to be the shift this week. Yeah, just a reminder. Alvin that's depressing. Kamara had 33 receiving yards. <laughs> And he caught the ball 13 times. Yeah, he's a great play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alvin Kamara's a great play. And yeah. Olave, uh, you, you just throw him back out there because of his, his skill, his ability, his talent, but this is not a good matchup. He's Garrett Wilson right now. He he's like be, a super talented wide receiver that you're going to play I because he's, of his talent, yeah, I think but he's, he's got a quarterback than, problem. I think he's worse than Garrett Wilson right now. This week, yes. Because of the targets. But, yeah, hopefully they get back up there. I did love that Jameis Winston came in for one single snap, <laughs> basically said, F it. Yeah. And chucked the ball yeah. as far as he could into triple coverage to Olave down the sideline. Bring back Jameis Winston. Jameis was trying to win the game. Like make Olave great again. At at that at the point of the game when Jameis came in, it was we need a miracle. And you don't get a miracle by putting the backup in there and going, Oh, I'll just check it down again. You're like, no, go make something happen. It wasn't a good outcome. <laughs> Car, go go but, punt that ball. <laughs> Carr is the check and Winston's the chuck. And I like the Winston. But uh, Kamara, Olave, are you messing around with anybody else? I, I, I do think uh, Michael Thomas has been a good possession receiver in full PPR leagues. Um, you know, if, if you're in full PPR, you pretty much are guaranteed 10 points, which is fine. I mean, so far this, this mm. year, 11 points, 12 points, 11 points, 9.3 points, and that was mm. in this last Derek Carr game. The pass rush of the New England Patriots is going to be there. So this is going to be check down city again. It's going to be Camaro. It's going to be Michael Thomas. How can how can those numbers that you said? So he's been 11, 12, 11, those and are, 9. Those are full point PPR. Yeah. No, I know. But how can those in full point PPR do not place him in the top 36 wide receivers in any given week? That's what I was bringing up. I was like, he has not been a wide receiver three one time this year in a PPR league. Yeah, he's not. That just shocks me with those numbers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, PPR numbers are definitely inflated, but he just he is. I you have a you have a you have a floor. You have a, I think you have a safe floor with Thomas, but I don't think you have any ceiling. Yeah, I I think if you, unless you are a heavy favorite, I'd be trying to play somebody with a ceiling. Sure. Baltimore's three and one. They take on the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are two and two. <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. The DraftKings oh, love it. The DraftKings sportsbook line has the Ravens as four point favorites. I normally say that part before I hit the button, but I forgot. Uh, Ravens heavy favorites. Over under is thirty eight points. This is called uh, what Tomlin does. Yeah. Tomlin, after a pathetic performance by the Pittsburgh Steelers. All of the noise around Matt Canada, which is well-deserved. Well-deserved. They find a way. In Baltimore, divisional matchup, at home, Pittsburgh, I think they find a way. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't play your Ravens because uh, Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews are going to be in there. Um, I originally was going to make Zay Flowers the start of the week. The fact oh, that you pulled it back? Yeah, I did. I did. Oh. I pulled it back. Uh, I still think he's a fine start. He's, yes, I'm not. He's, he's just a great start. He's a start. <laughs> just took the of the week away. Uh, Rashad Bateman and Beckham are both going to be back out on the field. Mark Andrews has returned, and um, Zay Flowers is uh, he's a he's a good player. But you're talking about a guy that's been outside the top forty at the wide receiver position for three weeks, and they're on the road. And the you've Steelers got, have been. Terrible I against know. wide receivers. Which Terrible. Is, Almost 40 points a week. That does not guarantee production for Zay Flowers. I Yeah, I can agree with that. But he's I – mean, I, I know that, that Beckham and Bateman should be back this week, but I even when they're healthy, I think that Zay Flowers is the number one wide receiver read for this team. No, no I, I disagree. Jason, where I, do you stay? I, I do agree with Mike on that. I think Zay Flowers is the number one wide receiver read in this offense. I think that's who they're going to focus – on getting the ball to um, and and see as their playmaker against the Steelers' off defense. 
Uh, we'll find out. This is a very low over under. It's thirty eight points, the lowest of the week, I believe, and uh, that that is not the kind of game I want a bunch of pieces within. It's fair. Uh, wide receivers in Pittsburgh. It's it's kind of Pickens and no one else. Mm-hmm. Uh, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. They're they're tough starts right now. Najee has been a little bit better uh, than he has than he started the year. He's playing about half of the time in terms of snap counts. So, yeah. you know, Najee's probably going to be in your lineup, but the the production last week was better from Jalen Warren because he got involved in the passing game. He yeah. said six targets in three of four games. In fact, Jalen Warren right now is on pace for 76 receptions on 93 targets over four weeks. So feels like a little bit of a safer bet. Like the floor is real low for Najee. Mm-hmm. He's not getting the targets. Like, that used to be, that was his one secret weapon in his rookie season. Yeah, his rookie season. He had 94 targets, 74 receptions. He's a very capable pass catching running back, especially for his size. There is hope that with Trubisky coming as the starter, or maybe as the starter, we, we don't know for sure yet, but if Trubisky is the starter, you could say, well, the first four um, weeks last season, you had Trubisky as a starter, you had three targets and six targets. Um, in a couple of games, so maybe he targets Najee more, but this just isn't a good offense. They're playing against a good defense. That makes me like Warren more yeah, because maybe, he's, beco- maybe. he's become the formal pass catcher in the offense. He's in on those downs. So if, if Trubisky targets the running back at all, that encourages me for Warren. Like Where, where do you go between Najee and Warren? I'd play oh, Warren. Oh, man, that is such a crazy thing to say that you could play Warren over Najee. And I think that I mean, Warren has scored more fantasy points on the season. I was going to say, they're 29-36 and 36 at running back position so far. Man, that is so tough. It, you know, It's not a good matchup. It's not a good matchup, not a huge over-under. In some matchups, I would be leaning towards the uh, touchdown opportunity from Najee, but this doesn't project to be one of those. So I, I, think, I, I think I'd go Jalen Warren over him. Hope for a big explosive play. Mike, what do you do with the running backs in Baltimore? We uh, talked about it earlier yeah. a little bit. It's going to be a committee. It will. It, it, as of now, it's still Gus, and the the matchup is not the worst. You know, 27th uh, against fantasy running backs. That's what the Steelers' defense is. I know Justice Hill was just returning back, and there's, you know, there's buzz from the underground for Keaton Mitchell, but he's also like, let's see if he actually is active this Sunday. And to me, it's it's Gus Edwards until – the team gives me a a an, a true reason to to believe that he's not the primary runner anymore. Okay. Am I alone in the uh, the the Pittsburgh upset? No, <clears throat> I don't. I don't think so. I'm. Um, I when I was making my picks for this game, I had the exact same thought process as you. As you. This is a team that every time you say they just stink. They're, they're out of it. They're not good. They're out of it. They're not a playoff contender. Tomlin is like, yes, we are. Yeah, we are. No, we're we're men, and we're going to play like men, and we're going to go out there and just, you know, hard work, blue collar our way to a ugly victory. So I don't, I don't, I don't blame the call. I'll take the Ravens. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. Well, we're into the starts of the week, and uh, I, I'll be honest with you, this this first one that I have at the quarterback position, it it it's out there on an island because it's Thursday night football. You Ooh. haven't seen what I have put in the document. Uh, no, I, I now I have, and oh, good God. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, somebody <laughs> find the Pepto for Mike. Get You're up. P- prepare for Mike. Uh, I feel great about mine now. <laughs> Sam Howell taking on the Chicago Bears defense uh, it's written in uh, with a question mark at the mm-hmm. end of it uh look this matchup is as good as it gets for sam Howell. you're coming off a great performance against philadelphia you have the weapons chicago's 31st against opposing fantasy wide uh, quarterbacks he, he runs i think it's going to be a pretty competitive game i think it's going to impress people with its uh competitiveness sam Howell, start of the week okay uh i'm gonna go with jordan love as my start of the week He's been good on the season, a month into the season. Love's averaging over 20 fantasy points per game. Uh, a month into the season, the Raiders are giving up over 20 fantasy points per game to the quarterback. 
And that is a love story of connection. So I like okay. yeah, I like Jordan Love this uh, this week. He's running the ball quite a lot too. All of his receivers are healthy. There's different ways for him to put up points. I, I think you stay in the flames with them. I know that the touchdown regression has to come back. Uh, the Raiders just aren't the team to to say, you know, oh, we, we'll shut them down. So I, I think you can stay in the flames with Jordan Love. It also has come back. The last two weeks, 2% yeah. pass, uh, touchdown rate uh, and a couple of uh, three turnovers. Yeah, still getting it done, though, for fantasy. Yep. So I had to take a trip to the old blacksmith, fellas, because I needed mm -hmm. an upgrade. Titanium underpants. Oh, yeah. We cannot put on steel yeah. underpants for this play, ladies and gentlemen. We must upgrade oh and protect gosh. ourselves. The pe the underpants are stacking. <laughs> we, yeah, we, got, we got steel on, but we got to protect that steel because we are playing, yes. This is the wildest. Zach Wilson against the Denver Broncos. The most points allowed per game at the position. The best schedule adjusted team to face at the quarterback position, 28 for 39. That is a 72% completion percentage, 245 and two against the Kansas City Chiefs. I tweeted about Wilson, and people are asking, can I do it? They're looking for the permission, and I say, we ride. We, if, if, this is the one time, fellas, we have to take advantage of the one time in his career that we can ever start the week, Zach Wilson, and I will be the one to do it. Okay, so <clears throat> I could see starting him over – like Russell Wilson against the Jets, okay, if that's your option. But I'm going to give you a couple names to see if you're really starting. So that Zach means he's Wilson. the top Wilson to start at quarterback. He's the top Wilson this week. Would you start Brock Purdy, Mr. Consistent, against the Dallas Cowboys defense, or would you throw Zach Wilson in there? If we're talking one quarterback, if I need an actual ceiling, I would be willing to go Zach Wilson. Let me ask you guys a question. Has Justin Fields in his career thus far – but? Not last week. Has he ever looked like a good passing quarterback? No. That was his first 300-yard game in 30 starts. Right. I'm saying he's so – he's never never been like, wow. You, you're impressed by a couple throws, but you're never like, that's a complete game from Justin Fields. And he looked dominant. Justin Fields looked dominant last week. And Wilson's coming off of a You're just momentum. saying the Denver Broncos yes. matchup is – That is exactly what I'm saying. Okay, last one. Because I, I just want to see if it goes all the way. Trevor Lawrence, who's been bad in London against Buffalo. I don't I don't know that I'm that courageous. Okay. No. T titanium different, has its limits. You need a yeah. different set of underpants. Look, there is a third level if we ever need to get to it, boys. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, that's frightening. Uh, I'm going to go right into wide receiver start because it uh, it's attached to your quarterback. Yes. It's Garrett Wilson. And uh, yeah, the, signs of, the signs of life are there. The target counts for Garrett Wilson, they have increased every week. He is demanding. He is the squeaky Wilson. Uh, five to eight to nine to 14 targets. He is due for one of those big-time games as he is one of the most talented wide receivers in football. I think you're going to get a big score from Garrett Wilson. In fact, I'm going to give you a touchdown guarantee from Garrett Wilson in this right. game, and the Broncos are literally begging you to score on them. I see Al right now taking care of business. I'll trail it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with Michael Pittman. We talked about him earlier. I think he's a very good start at, off of a bad week. You might be like, I don't. We built this city. Yeah, you, you, you think you might not be able to trust him. I think you can. 11 targets week one, 12 targets week two, 11 targets week three. And then his bad week this last week with only five targets. But he actually still had a 38% wide receiver target share. That was up from the week before. It just became the tight end show last they complete, week. He completed 11 passes total. Right. And and, total. and and so many of them were to tight ends um, towards the end of that game. But this matchup against Tennessee, we talked about it. Tennessee is a pass funnel defense. They're going to encourage teams to throw more on them and run fewer times. Uh, schedule adjusted Tennessee is 29th against wide receivers. They're giving up what equates to 37 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position. And so M Michael Pittman should receive uh, the largest – share of 37 fantasy points uh, I think you you should be starting Michael Pittman against the Tennessee Titans and it could be the final week for this play uh we'll, we'll see how things go with Cooper Cup but I'm going 2-2 at well against the Philadelphia Eagles wide receivers are running hot against that secondary it is the second best matchup in uh schedule adjusted ranking you just saw Sam Howell uh come to life against this Philadelphia Eagles team and uh 
I, I think, yeah. I think that with it being Cooper Cup's first game back projected, I think that two-two still is in play. I almost made Cooper Cup start of the week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait till we get to my tight end, fellas. Joe Mixon is my running back start of the week. Great opportunity for him against an yep, Arizona yep. defense that is thirtieth thirtieth against fantasy running backs. They could be without T. Higgins. They'll lean on the run game, and uh, he has not been bad relative to the the reality that this team has not been in the red zone um, very often this year. Arizona is the is an opportunity for Joe Mix, and he's still sitting at RB19 despite the fact the Bengals are barely scoring any points. So uh, I think it's a good week for Mixon. At running back, baby, we're starting our Jets. <laughs> Fire him up. Brees Hall, baby. I love Brees Hall. He's an insanely explosive. That statement doesn't need to be made. Well, yes, it does. I can't speak on Brees Hall without sharing my love. When you truly love something, Andrew, you need people to know. Um, and, and you I, said it free. Is that why you didn't draft him anywhere? Oh, I've got him. What are you talking about? I've got I've got Brees Hall. Did that you drafted this year? Dynasty baby. Because <laughs> I love him. he's he's look he's insanely explosive. Like very few players in the NFL are. And I love the Broncos defense. They give up opportunities for explosive plays like very few teams in NFL history uh the the Broncos gave up 97 fantasy points to the Dolphins running backs in week three <laughs> they but sure did they also gave up 34.7 the third most fantasy points to the Washington Manders the week before that and they gave up over 20 fantasy points to Khalil Herbert this last week who's been putrid if Brees Hall gets chances against a team that gives lanes to run He's going to be gone, and you have the head coach coming out saying, hey, all the restrictions on Brees Hall, they're gone now. That means two things. One, they were restricting him. Two, is gone. It, did you, it, did it, it, it's, yes. it's wheels yeah. up. Did, Jets are flying. Did you hear the stupid comments, mm -hmm. though? He's, he made the same comments about Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, who was on the field 25% of snaps, only got five carries last week and looks terrible. Brees Hall is a great play this week. No, I, I wasn't saying. I was saying he made the comments yeah. about giving Dalvin Cook more work. No, I know. I'm saying – that's just not playing out in real life. They 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 didn't want him on the field because he stinks. Yeah, the, <laughs> I don't think you get what I'm saying. But I, go on. Yeah, I'm talking about upcoming. He said for the future weeks. But go on, Mike. It's David Montgomery. <clears throat> David Montgomery. Excuse me. The Panthers, the third best schedule adjusted uh, matchup for fantasy running backs. It's a home game. They are ten point favorites. We saw last week what's going to happen when the when the Detroit Lions are dominating a team. It's going to be all Montgomery all the time, and that's what I'm projecting for this week. Zach Ertz is my tight end start of the week. Take yeah. the dirty, nasty targets. I have to agree. Just absorb the targets. The Bengals are one of the worst teams against tight ends. Mm -hmm. Ertz is on pace for 120 targets. You don't have to watch. Just play him. Yeah, when you're looking at tight end starts of the week, you're, you're really looking for the low-end, waiver-wire type of guys who might get volume. That's why I'm going with Tyler Higby. We obviously love Matthew Stafford this week. The matchup at home against the Eagles mean he's going to throw the ball a lot. Higby got the big contract, got 11 targets this last week. I think he'll be very involved. And the Eagles, they're the, against tight ends. They're 30th right now against tight ends. Schedule adjusted, they're still terrible against tight ends. This is a exploitable matchup in a game where you think Matthew Stafford's going to have to throw a lot at the tight end position. He he should be a, a top a top option, and it might surprise you. But three out of the four weeks, Tyler Higby has been a, a tight end one already on the season. I'm going with Darren Waller. Goo goo gajoob, everybody. Because he gets to take on the Miami Dolphins. The Miami ranking against tight end, I don't think it tells the complete story of where they really are as a team. The, the first two weeks, it was fantastic. I mean, that's why I was I had targeted them with Gerald Everett. It was just it happened to be Donald Parham that came through. Uh, so we've had those weeks. And I think it was Hunter Henry the next week. But then it was Denver, which... With they don't Greg, have one right with, now. Exactly. With Greg Dulcich out, it, Adam Trauma's not going to get it done. And then Buffalo, it was just... Stephon Diggs had an explosive game. I mean, the the, the tight ends didn't really have to do anything because Stephon Diggs was stealing all the fantasy points. I think we get right back to work, and Darren Waller, I think we have a bounce back. So game. if he if, if Waller has a down game amidst then a good matchup, it is, is it panic. full panic mode? Yes, 100%. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It's all starting here.
Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. In the swampy Everglades, through the misty cascades, past gators and eerie salamanders, with traps set, no regret, I seek the one threat, the head of the Dolphins, Jason Sanders. So we, violent, yeah. Man. We, I mean, look, we went from leg drops to head hunting. I mean, do we have the, we <laughs> taking them out? Taking them out this year. Kids are listening to this show. Kids need to know violence is not to the, get kickers out of your league. <laughs> like wow, the, the kids are the like, future. The kids are the ones who need to grow up and become leaders of fantasy leagues. Commissioners who say no, I will not have kickers in my league. Behead them. Behead, be, behead them virtually in your fantasy leagues by getting rid of the position. All right, that is it for today's episode of the show. Like I said earlier, head over to jointhefoot.com if you'd like to become a supporter of the podcast. We've got matchups in the fantasy face-off tomorrow. Hopefully uh, you're more less violent in the wheel of shame, and we'll catch you then. Goodbye. you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers <laughs>